Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NAB's largest live virtual show. This is The Big AR Show. Hello and welcome to The Big AR Show. My name is Chris Black, and today I'm going to show you something completely new, something that's never been seen before, before NAB. This is the brand new Viz Engine 4. Now, Viz Engine 4 is going to help you transform the way you tell stories in the studio using photorealistic augmented reality graphics and virtual studios. But before we get to that, let me first tell you a little bit about some of the tools that we're using here today. First of all, you see my little friendly robot running around the studio here. This is an Electric Friends robotic camera, and it is sending tracking data over to our Viz, Viz Virtual Studio software so that you can see the movement in the virtual set. Also, right over here, we have the Stipe Human Crane. It's mounted with a Red Spy uh, optical tracking system. So as the crane moves around the studio, it is also sending tracking data over to our virtual set so that you can see that movement in the studio. And then our director is driving the entire live production right over here in our control room using the N-Quad system. All the graphics that you're seeing here today are rendered with a new Viz4. Now, I've said virtual studio a few times here, but there's no green screen or blue screen here. What we're going to be using today is a combination of augmented reality graphics and the video wall to be able to create a very unique virtual set environment. In fact, we've already added a virtual studio into the video wall set itself. This is what we call the virtual window. And as the camera moves around the studio, you can see that it does have a lot of movement and depth to it. They give us more space for telling different kinds of stories. Now, this first thing that we're looking at is we see this light pull pulsing on and off. So what I'm going to do now is tell you a little bit about how the different techniques that we can use to put together to create a virtual set that has some nice photorealistic attributes to it. So first off is lighting. So we're, what we're doing here is turning the light on and off. We're using global illumination to achieve our lighting in Viz 4. And Viz Engine 4 uses global illumination to be able to have the different 3D objects in the studio interact with each other, reflecting light with each other. So as the lights turn on and off, we're having that global light hit these different materials, and the different materials are reflecting light and creating shadows in different ways based upon the parameters that we have set there. So this is one piece of it, but let's start bringing in some augmented reality graphics into the studio to take a look at some of the other techniques that we'll be using. So we'll bring in the Viz4 logo, and again, watch the monitors just above my head. This is going to be showing you the full augmented reality output for our show today. Now the Viz4 logo right now has uh, being rendered using physical-based rendering. This is the rendering method that we're using for Viz Engine 4. And now we have a large library of materials that we can use to apply to these 3D objects. And so we're flipping through some of those materials now. And each material has a very robust editor so that you can adjust those materials to get the exact preferred uh, use and design that you want to have for that object. We're already also adding in some lighting there so you can see some nice reflections and soft shadows applied to the object. But let's bring in something a little bit more complex. Let's take the four out of the studio, add in the AR floor, and bring in our friend Robo Kenny. So we're going to open up the AR studio floor for a moment. And here comes Robo Kenny jumping out of the VizRT basement. There he comes. And so now what we're doing here is we're tying together a lot of different techniques to create a more photorealistic object in the studio. First, you see those eyes glowing there. That is using a bloom effect with the lighting. But you also look down at the feet. We have real-time reflections and soft shadows uh, tying the, the virtual world to the physical world using the AR graphics. Now, if we swap over to the uh, Stipe Red Spy system, we can take a look and take a closer look at the 3D objects. So we're going to use a crane to really go over here and take a look at some of the aspects there. Now, we have these different materials applied throughout the object. And so as the materials are hitting, getting hit by light, they are reflecting that light in different ways based upon the attributes of the material. That is creating different kinds of shadows, reflections, light blooms, and all of these are coming together to give you a very, very nice photorealistic look and feel. But let's take away Robo Kenny for a moment and then take a look at something a little bit more beautiful in the studio, where we tie all of these techniques together. So we're going to change out our virtual set for a moment, bring down the lights, 
And now, let's bring the lights back up again. Here we are. This is a v very beautiful 1962 Ferrari GTO. And as it's rendering in our video wall, this is not some clip that's playing out. This is not something that's created in a third-party th 3D program. This is a 3D model that was brought into Viz Engine 4. We've added in our substance shaders. We've brought in nice, some nice materials, added in HDR lighting that give you this very beautiful presentation. But let's take a closer look and actually bring it out into the studio floor. So here it is driving out into the studio. You see those real-time reflections and lighting effects that's affecting the hood of the car. We're going to come around and rotate in here and take a closer look at some of these materials. All right, so let's zoom into the hood for a moment and see what we have there. Now, right as we get into the hood here, you can already see that we have some of these nice real-time reflections. So uh, my face is actually reflecting in the hood of the car. So we're able to reflect the real world into the virtual objects to give you a nice uh, combination of the real and virtual. Not only that, but we're also able to change the depth of field that we have on the graphics. So right now, I'm out of focus, but we can change the focus so the front of the car is now out of focus. And with that depth of the field, we're giving the illusion of giving you a lot more depth to the studio space using the AR and the virtual set graphics. But let's zoom out a little bit and drive down the rails with our electric friend robot for a moment and take a look at some of the other aspect attributes that we have here. So again, I have that beautiful HDR lighting on there. We have those substance shaders giving you some nice textures, beautiful reflections in the windows. You have that real-time reflection just below and all those soft shadows. So all of these are coming together to give you a really just breathtaking presentation of AR graphics in your studio. All right, let's roll this back out into the VizRT uh, garage, keep it protected over there, and take a look at what else we can do with using virtual sets in our studio space. So here we've added enough, the virtual set back into our video wall again. Now let's take a little tour of our virtual set that we have here. Here we have some of those nice wood materials we've added in there, those real-time uh, reflections being added to the floor, the nice uh, uh, lights coming in. We also have some nice diffuse lights coming in from the outdoor windows. But what I also want to take a look at here is the size of the studio itself. itself. So the studio space that I have right now is fairly limited that we have in our physical studio here at NAB. But what we want to do now is use augmented reality graphics to be able to create a much larger virtual studio. So let's switch over to the red spy camera for a moment and then start moving that around and see what we have here. Now as we start panning out, you can see that we have been able to expand the studio out into a much larger space. So using AR and these set extensions, we are able to greatly expand your virtual environment within your studio. In fact, the camera is now pointed out into the audience right now. You can see this is a massive virtual set. So we're going to roll this back around into the studio here. And what this means is if you have a very limited studio space in your production facility, just by using augmented reality graphics, you can make it look massive and cinematic live on the air. Now, and this, of course, all without the need of a green screen or blue screen, because we're using AR graphics to create this set extension. But we also want to be able to use Viz Engine 4 to be able to do our AR, our uh, uh, virtual set productions using blue screens and green screens. And so let's bring in some green screen content. Last week we went to Vienna and visited ORF at their beautiful facilities there. And we shot a little bit of footage in their green screen environment that they use every night for their evening uh, presentations. And so here I am standing in that green screen. Now right now we're going to take a look at some of the issues that you run into using green screen content. First off, you see that green spill that you see here on my face, also in the hair, and some of the green spill coming into my shirt. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem that you have with a lot of chroma keyers, where the green is so intense that it's spilling onto the skin. Now what we want to protect though, is we want to protect the high detail that we have of the border between my shirt and the green screen and the virtual set. As same with my hair, we want to be able to have a very clean key on all of these features. So using the new Fusion keyer, we're going to be able to give you a very, very clean key in your virtual studio. Let's take a look. So the Fusion keyer is a new keyer that has been built up, rebuilt from the ground up using uh, the latest technology for keying. So we're using multiple mats to be able to change the image that we're looking at. First off, we were able to get rid of that green spill. Next, we're able to retain the integrity of the cleanness of the hair and give you very, very sharp keying there, as well as all the shoulders and around my shirt. Now, we're also going to be doing a little bit of a defocus on the edges of my shirt to blend it in with the background. And finally, we're taking the 
color that we have in the background and creating a virtual spill so that the spill that is coming onto my shirt and my skin is natural looking like based upon the virtual environment in the virtual studio. All of those come together to give you the perfect key in your green screen or blue screen environment. All right, let's uh, take a look at a couple of other things with Viz Engine 4. Now, Viz Engine 4 is not just about creating beautiful virtual studios and augmented reality graphics, even though it is really fantastic at that. It is also the centerpiece of your complete live production capabilities. So first off, it is totally IP ready. So you are ready to go for the IP future using NDI, SMPTE 2110, or whatever format you prefer to use uh, as your IP production. But we also have the ability to have a very flexible licensing structure. So your same Viz Engine that is using, uh, being used to create AR graphics today can be used as a live production system tomorrow or even a clip player the next day. You have control over your flexible uh, licensing system so that you can change that on a day-to-day -day basis all using the same system. And not only that, but we're also able to bring in all of your graphics that you're using today so that you can very easily use them for next productions without having to do any extra design work. So let's actually go out back out to the main studio for a moment. Now using our legacy Viz Engine uh, 3 pipeline, we can take all of your graphics that you're using today and be able to use them within Viz Engine 4. So while you're preparing for your new graphics to have that photorealism with Viz Engine 4, you can still be using your current graphics. And now uh, I want to take a look at some uh, examples of this. During the 2018 US election, every major American broadcaster was using VizRT graphics for AR on the air. And we actually have some of the uh, Fox News graphics here as AR graphics in our studio. Now this is the graphics that they used outdoors uh, near Times Square on the side of a building. And this is all data-driven uh, graphics. So it's rendering in real time, it's taking in the data from the election and updating the map in real time based upon that data. But I also want to do a little bit more of this. Let's take a look at a different graphic coming in from Tencent. Now these graphics were designed by our friends at Giraffic, and we're gonna bring in that Tencent graphic in here. And what this is going to allow us to do is interact with the 3D graphics. So Tencent likes to have their audience send in information on WeChat and tell them what their favorite play of the day was. And then they'll profile some of the, the fans out there that can understand what they really liked about the game. So what we're going to do now is be able to profile one of these players. So I'm just gonna reach in here and grab this one, pull her up, there we go. And so now using the Stipe follower, I'm able to interact with the AR graphics in the studio. So I can give me a full physical interaction with not just the AR, but also the virtual set. And I can do things like I'm doing now, moving the graphic around, but I can also grab the graphics, rotate them, scale them, and trigger different events. So now I have full tactile capability of interacting with all the graphics in our virtual set. All right, let's toss this away for a moment, take that out of the studio, and let's bring in another graphics package from the NFL Network, which is also designed from our friends at Giraffic. Here we are, so now this graphic coming in from the NFL Network. Now this is a very simple graphic, but as the camera moves around, it has some nice parallaxing. But the reason I bring up this graphic is because it kind of harkens back to the founding of VizRT in 1997, where we were founded by a TV station that wanted to empower their journalists to be able to tell stories without any kind of technical hurdles. And so we've taken that same ethos and moved that in to the augmented reality world as well. So the journalists can very easily create any AR graphic for their shows. All they need to do is open up their newsroom system, iNews, EMPS, Octopus, whichever system you want to use. Open up a very simple to use template, change that to graphics, change out the images, change out the text, and then you have a new AR graphic that can be used not just for every show, but for every story. It's an empowering the journalist to be able to use AR as a powerful storytelling tool for every presentation that they make. Now, one other thing here, um, everything that you've seen here today has been designed by VizArtist, which is our design platform. The thing about VizArtist is it's free. You can go to VizArt.com right now and download your free copy of Viz Artist and begin designing right away. In fact, right after NAB, we are going to be hosting a webinar. We'll be showing to you the latest features of Viz Artist 4 and Viz Engine 4, and also giving you the ability to download your copy of Viz Engine. And Viz, I'm uh, sorry, your, your copy of Viz Artist. So if you want to sign up for this right away, we have an iPad right on this corner of the screen here where you can go over there, scan your badge, you'll be signed up for that webinar, and you'll be able to get your free copy of Viz Artist. 
So uh, next up, we're going to take a look at how all of this works in the newsroom. I was talking about that journalist-driven workflow. We want to take a closer look at that. So we're going to do that with our connected storytelling presentation hosted by Vagard. We're going to take a look at how you can create the graphics in the newsroom, control them in the control room, and then publish live to air and to multiple devices. So thank you very much, everybody. Please stick around for Vagard's presentation on the connected storytelling, and I'll see you soon.